All right, coming to the news now, um, the news of Dubai and the Middle East. The first one is, um, this one is Dubai attracts 38.5 billion dirhams worth of FDI. Now, what is FDI? For those of you who do not know, it is foreign direct investment. A foreign direct investment is an investment in the form of a controlling ownership in a business in one country by an entity that is entirely from another country. So in this, you have uh, April 8th a report that says last year, Dubai was 10th. This year, it reached 6th where, um, you know, foreign direct investment is concerned. And uh, it seems it created 25,000 new jobs uh, with a 77% increase. This, I feel, is a little bit of bullshit. Okay. So, you know, they can claim anything. Uh, how do you prove this? Whether they've created 25,000 jobs? Because here's my question is, okay, you create 25,000 jobs. Can you tell me how many jobs were lost? Can you tell me how many people were bankrupt? This information is not given. So when you're only given the positive, well, you know, I don't buy it. Now, as for this report, it seems the funds flowed from United States, 37%, India, 12%, Spain, 9%, China, 7 UK, 5 Now, this is where um, the, the countries that put in the investment. Um, however, it was put into the following sectors. 46% was put into accommodation and food services. So I'm assuming that is accommodation means housing and food services mean restaurants. 15% was put into commercial construction, 8% residential, 5% into arts, entertainment, recreation, and 4% into finance and insurance. So this is as per the late times. Then um, I've also noticed this. This seems to be coming in the news very strongly nowadays. Uh, Finabler. I hope I got the name right. Finab, Finabler. Finabler, which consists of UE Exchange, TravelX Holdings, and Express Money is planning to raise 200 million and some reports say 500 million from london's ipo now uh, even though this might look like wow what an amazing thing and uh, i always tell people is remember free money doesn't come with without any you know hidden uh, strings now if a ue based company is taking foreign investments you are inviting the scrutiny of these investors they have a right to ask you questions they have a right where is this money coming from? Where is it going? And they'll have a controlling arm. And this causes a lot of problems. Um, UAE's, uh, you know, UAE companies are doing this for the first time. So they're very excited. You would see the real, uh, real problems after, you know, takeover. That is why many companies, you know, so, uh, you know, they, they make it public and then they buy back the shares and say, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think even Dell, Michael Dell did that. So um, correct me if I'm wrong over there. Now, and uh, in the same news, uh, we say we also see Evoc, Evoc.com. They managed to raise 30 million US dollars or 110 million dirhams uh, from its first outside funding. And uh, it's a, uh, they employ 700 people in the UAE alone. And um, the founder, that is Ulug, Ulugbek Yuldevashiv, Oh, what a big name. Okay, sorry if I murdered that name. Who's the founder and chief executive of Evoc? He said something which I felt was rather funny. He said, We really see Evoc as being the Alibaba of the Middle East. Wow, that is a pretty big statement. So, wish you all the best. I'm not saying you cannot do, but uh, if you're talking of being Alibaba, hmm, think again. Okay. Um, and for those people who keep uh, telling me, you know, fake news, Lloyd, fake news. Well, you have Bloomberg, once again, that is still stating that this bank is merging with this bank. I don't want to keep repeating the bank. In this report, it was Dubai Islamic Bank considers acquiring Noor Bank. But like I told you, the reason why banks are merging is because they are collapsing. And if they collapse, the economy will collapse. So they have to merge or they cannot survive. There are too many defaulters, too many people taking loans, not being able to pay back, commercial loans, not being able to pay back, car loans, credit cards. So it had to happen at some point. Next one is, this is for those people who are especially traveling. Uh, Dubai airport is going to close down its southern runway from April 16th to May 30th. So it's going to upgrade, uh, going to go through some upgrading work. So because of this, 48 aircrafts of Emirates Airlines are going to be utilized. 25% reduction in the overall flights. 
uh, during this 45 day period. Uh, low cost carrier Fly Dubai will operate 42 of its destinations from Dubai World Central. So now, what is the problem? You'll have to drive down 60 kilometers from Dubai, that's a really long drive to go there. And the airport is completely empty once you land there. But uh, then again, if they're going to drive it, uh, you know, divert so much of traffic, it may be busy. Um, did you know, this is an interesting fact, last time Dubai operated with just one runway was in 2014. And it had to upgrade and repair both its runways. That closure lasted for 80 days and they lost 1.7 billion dirhams in revenue. That's 467 million uh, dollars those days, 2014. So now when they're closing, again, they would have loss. So because in order to combat this, the next piece of news is that Dubai is going to offer you a discount. So they're going to slash down its price. So I was like, wow, they're going to slash down. And then they give this good news from April 16th to May 30th. You'll get 75% discount. I was like, wow, that's a massive discount. But then what I realized is that 75% discount is a catch. There's a catch. What is a catch? Before, when you sit in a taxi, it starts at 20 dirhams. And now when you sit in a taxi, it's going to start at 5 dirhams. So you'll get a discount of around $4. That's the only discount you'll get. Rest, the meter is going to run the same way and you'll have to pay the same way. So, uh, you know, I like the way the news is worded. It always misguides people. And um, another one, because of the airport closing down, Fly Dubai is going to give you a nice discount. What they're saying is, uh, we're going to give you 15% discount on the condition that you and your partner book tickets with return tickets uh, from April 14th to May 28th. Uh, economy and business class tickets will be given a discount. Uh, destinations are Prague, Mumbai, Kharkov and Georgia capital Tbilisi. So if you're going to any of these sectors, they're going to give you a discount of 672 grams. That's roughly, I think, around $150. Hmm. But you need to find your partner and you need, both of you need to book return tickets through them. I hope they don't give any hidden charges. Okay, and uh, still sticking with the discount theme, you have, uh, I found this rather funny because in Gulf News, after this news was put, they deleted it. I don't understand why. So I had to search and finally, I found on WAM, that is uh, the Dubai's official website. It seems that Dubai parks and resorts will give only for local shokals, that is UAE nationals, from uh, 8th April onwards, um, a discounted uh, special pass where you can visit any of these for 14 months. Mohammed Al Mullah, CEO and Managing Director of Dubai, DXP Entertainment said, we have over 100 nationalities that are visiting Dubai parks and resorts. Now we are turning our attention to UAE national visitors as per this report. So I was thinking like, you have 100 different nationalities that are visiting you except locals. That means there is something massively wrong. Okay, so coming to the next piece of news. One minute. Uh, okay. Um, if you thought discounts and discounts and discounts were just happening, this one was um, rather different piece of news it's uh, you know it is from hoteliermiddleeast.com and um, the the ceo of uh, a core group of hotels what he says is um, giving these discounts is not an actually good thing he's saying because uh, his words huh? his exact words is it's going to lead to a blood bath in the industry just imagine his words very strong words he's saying customers are becoming an expert at value for money deals if you are a mom and pop, mom and pop hotel, small hotel, you can give a discount. Eh, there's no problem. But if you're talking, if you're, ex you know, if you're expecting brands like us to give discount, and we have to give in order to survive, it's it's going to destroy us. Why? Because our hotels are expensive to build. Quality stuff is expensive to maintain. Fresh food is expensive to keep. Fresh delivery is expensive, and all these expensive stuff cannot be discounted. So if we start giving people at a discount and anything is less than the best, they're going to put a stinker of a fucking review and that will affect our brand. This is my, my analysis extra over there. So I think it's right because what is happening is these discounts are temporary fixed to the problem. The larger problem is the fact that UA is not able to attract people to come down to the UAE or the Middle East. 
that glamour is gone. So hotels are too many. They will have to shut down. So well, this is a worthwhile article. At least something is honest. Uh, in the Middle East, it's not just UAE and uh, Saudi that have problems. Here, Oman news you have from Kalish Times. It seems that uh, in 2017, there were 2,963 checks which were which were bounced. Uh, that means people issued them. They never honored them. They ran away. In 2018, from 2,963, it jumped to 3,054. So even though it's just 100, 200 checks extra, if you think that it's $1 per check, it's a small amount. But if you calculate that maybe people have issued $100,000 or $50,000 or $1 million, uh, worth of checks, uh, then it comes to a big amount. So officials are stating that most of the expats who write bogus checks or write checks and then try to run out of the country, they're going to chew, take the help of Interpol to get them back. So, you know, people who have big amounts, please be careful, like I always tell you. Uh, next one is, uh, this is Qatar versus UAE, which is so much, so much you know, all over the news. This one is Qatar sues UAE for a brazen scheme. It sues, uh, it is suing UAE and Saudi. Uh, I'll give you the links both at Bloomberg and Al Jazeera. Uh, they are saying that they are manipulating and try to harm Qatar through their policies. So this will never stop UAE and Qatar and Saudi attacking each other. Then um, if you're talking of national pride, you might remember the Asia Cup where Qatar gave UAE a sounding uh, loss and uh, that was you know, that destroyed UAE's pride. Here you have Qatar beats UAE and Saudi for football elections. Um, and uh, it seems that no Saudi or UAE delegate was appointed uh, on the 47 member federation. So on the Asian Football Confederation Executive Committee, which is uh, shocking. I wonder, maybe they paid people money. Next one is Qatar is pretty serious. Uh, they're taking serious steps because they know now uh, there is no more unity in the Middle East. So they are offering non Qataris, that is expatriates, residency. As per this report, I want you to read it. Uh, QatarLiving.com. What it says is now, I don't know if this is a forum, this is a blog, or this is actual policy by the government. So if anyone in Qatar can actually verify this for me, as reported by Gulf Times, non Qataris will be eligible to apply for permanent residency. 20 years, the conditions are. 20 years residency or if you're born in the state of Qatar for and been there for 10 years, adequate income, obviously you need to have money, good behavior, uh, good reputation, no you know, criminal records, uh, you have knowledge of the Arabic language and um, well, they've given an embedded video which I want you to see and uh, it seems that uh, people who are exempt from the above mentioned conditions are children of Qatari women married to a non-Qatari man non-Qatari husband of a Qatari woman, a non-Qatari wife of a Qatari man, children of Qatari by naturalization, those who have provided a great service to the state and people with special capabilities which are needed by the state. So it seems that uh, you can apply uh, through the ministry uh, MOI, that is their website, uh, Ministry of Interior, I think, yeah. A fee of 3,000 Qatari Riyals or $823. You'll get a PR card, you'll enjoy rights and privileges, health, education, investments, other uh, areas. So if anyone from Qatar can actually tell me, did you apply for it? Uh, what's going on? I'll keep your identity anonymous, but it's good to share what is happening. And it seems that finally the Middle East has realized you can't treat expats like shit, like dirt. You have to give them some kind of assurance, security that you can be here. Uh, but, you know, the drawback that I see in this Qatari thing is they'll keep you as long as you're useful. If you're old, if you're of no use, then where do you go? You get sent back to your country. So once again, I just see, okay, it's a much better step than most of the other countries, but still, you know, uh, end of the day, being a citizen of your own country, you'll never get kicked out. So that's what I say. And uh, uh, next one is uh, Bloomberg. Um, the title says U.S. Energy makes another crack at Saudi Bastion with LPG sales. But as I was reading in between the lines, this nice little graph kind of showed me as to why India is 
you know, uh, UAE gave an award to Modi and they said, oh, he has got the highest award and yeah, Modi and the UAE government is hugging each other. I was wondering why. Finally, I found this nice little chart which shows that, um, you know, India imports most of its LPG from three nations, Saudi, Qatar, UAE and others. So UAE is a nice little partner uh, that is supplying, uh, that imports its LPG. So obviously, you have to be in the good books of each other if you have to increase business. So give me your thoughts. Give me your thoughts because, uh, like I say, numbers do the talking. Uh, next, coming to uh, what the readers have sent me. This reader sent me a WhatsApp message. Obviously, I've sent it his details. He said, good morning, Lois, sending you these so you can expose the bankruptcy, UAE's bankruptcy to the world. They're giving good plans. That is, UAE is offering, you know, Itisalad or do packages in postpay. That is 200 GB plus 750 flexi minutes for 200 dirhams. So you can see the disparities. Uh, and he sent me screenshots of different packages, which, you know, it would be confusing. But if you could compare it in an Excel sheet, maybe it makes sense. So what he's trying to say is, they're trying to allure more people in post-paid plans and then butcher them. What he says is, one of my friends in Intertech was jailed for six months for no fault of his. Four Patan guys were using the same, Patan is someone from, I think, Balochistan, Pakistan. were using the same post-paid SIM he was using. One SIM issued by his ID, used by another four guys. Then the court harassed him. He was nabbed at Dubai airport while going to Nepal for an annual leave. Other postpaid scams are rampant in UAE. If you please let the world know, UAE is literally bankrupt, but too boastful to seek a bailout like IMF, like Pakistan. Thanks, man. Um, personally, what I look at it is, is kind of confusing. These, this He's trying to make one plus one is seven or something. I would just say that if you're taking any package, if you're taking uh, any service, make sure that you pay everything and you close the account. And it is your personal responsibility to check every month how much is being used and to clear it. What I see this is not UAE squeezing the guy or bankruptcy. You know, say I, I mentioned problem, but where, you know, something is wrong is wrong. But if something is not wrong, I don't want to create a story. So here I hold the guy responsible because it is his fucking responsibility. He's using a service. And then if he has given his SIM card to other people to use with the internet and they've used and he didn't know that's his carelessness, he is accountable for his SIM card, for his internet usage because he has given his passport and his national ID. So I don't think UAE is doing anything wrong here. But please keep in mind, if you are planning to travel or leave the country, go to the bank, go to the police station, go to your, um, you know, uh, your rent or wherever, wherever you have issued checks, clear everything. Find out that you don't owe anyone anything and then leave the country. That's what I did. That's why I didn't have any issues and problems. I just see him as being very careful. Next one, I got this reader who asked me, Lloyd, what do you think of Khalid Al Amri and what do you think of more vlogs? So first is Khalid Al Amri. Khalid Al Amri has 1.6 million people who follow him. And if you check him, he's a very friendly guy. He's a very nice guy. There's nothing bad about him. Um, he is one of those nicey, nicey guys who doesn't want to get into uh, bad books of anyone. So I, you know, personally, I, I don't see any problems with him. Um, so what I think of him, I just think that he has a brand and he's trying to do his best uh, to market that brand and, uh, you know, he's making his money. So uh, I don't think anything bad of him. He positions himself as a nice guy. And more vlogs is this guy, he's 21 year old. He is, uh, I'm checking his YouTube, he has 7 million, 7.5 million subscribers. That's a massive amount. And, um, you know, so, um, you know, he keeps showing his Ferraris. He keeps showing uh, that he's visiting uh, royal families and he has expensive houses and uh, he's eating at expensive joints, you know, that uh, Salt Bay, rich kids in India. So he, I think he has a rich life. He has rich parents. Uh, he has a rich family. So he's capitalizing on uh, his wealth. So I don't see any problem with the with him wanting to show his wealth. So um, 
you know, each one is a different brand. So Khalid is a nice guy. He's humble. Mo Vlogs is a rich guy. He shows you his wealth. And, you know, I'm a personal branding guy. Small little peanut channel. So each one to his own. Yeah. Next one is um, this one. I, I keep getting this. So I thought I'd address this. Um, a gentleman who was very kind enough said, Loy, just a thought that came to me for you and your work that you do to inform us on the happenings in GCC countries, especially UAE. You speak sarcasm with so much enthusiasm and wit. Would like to see you speak at stand-up comedy shows or even a video of starting exercise programs to be fit. It will be a big hit and do well. Just a suggestion. Take it or leave it. A um, couple of things. Stand-up comedy is not easy. If you actually research uh, people who do stand-up comedy for one hour, comedy special, one hour, you have to literally have material that you practice every single day, seven days a week, maybe for the next eight to 10 to 12 hours. Imagine for one full fucking year, just to get half an hour to 45 minutes to one hour of really good, funny content. It is that tough. So a standard comedy is not a joke. Uh, let's not discount those people. And exercise programs, and all, I doing push-ups, showing your muscles. There are so many of them. You just have to Google on YouTube. You'd see, so for those people who are not on YouTube, who don't make a living, it's very easy to get a device. It's like me telling you how to be a doctor or engineer, even though I'm not a doctor or engineer. So please, um, all that glitters looks very easy. Oh, I, if I start a business, I'll be my own boss. Oh, if I get married, I'll be so happy. I'll have a wife to love and we'll be romantic. We'll eat together. It's, it's, uh, you know, once you get into it, you know, what are the, it, uh, you know, challenges. So I'm not, I'm not discounting what you've said, but at the same time, stand-up comedy is not a joke. Um, it's very hard. We need to respect those people who are doing that and uh, exercise programs. I'm sorry, that's not my forte. So I don't want to, I don't have time for this. Next one is a reader who shared with me a couple of photographs of Mirdas at the center. He sent me these empty photographs. Uh, it's pretty shocking that Mirdav City Center is having so many shops that are empty. And this kind of gives you a reality check of how business is in shopping malls and shopping malls eventually are going to shut down one by one because, you know, it, it, it costs shitload of money to keep them running. The electricity, the AC, um, it's, it's not cheap. So eventually you'll see this happen. So uh, that's my theory at least. Uh, next one is a Sarja um, a reader says, Sarja Industrial Area Roy, there are lots of empty shops. And uh, he said, you know, please warn your people. It's very simple. If there are empty shops, either show me a photograph or a video, then people will believe. Next one is uh, this guy, reader asked me, Roy, uh, do you have any information of what UAE did with the public uh, donation drive of the Kerala Flood Relief Fund? India stated that it would not take any money from UAE uh, other than through NGOs. And UAE kept collecting money in the guise of Kerala Relief Fund. Where did the money go? I have no fucking idea. If you have any idea, where did the money go of Kerala Relief Fund? Please share that information. Next one is, I found this funny. Uh, Loy, hope you're having a good day. I was preparing for a driving license exam for, sorry, Dubai license exam for dentists. I always wanted to practice dentistry in Dubai and drive a Range Rover there. But after watching your videos, now I'm really afraid to go. Here's the thing. Don't become a doctor or a dentist to drive a Range Rover. Range Rover is greed, is money, is pleasure. That's nothing got to do with being a doctor. Being a doctor is service to mankind, is health. So if you're thinking of making it a business, then you need to think like a businessman. And if you think like a businessman, to get a Range Rover, first, you need to sort yourself out. You need to earn money, have a career, have a name, have loyal customers, have references, have referrals, build your business. From there, your savings, you can buy. First you buy a Toyota, then you buy more expensive car, then you buy a Lexus, then you buy it. So you get a Range Rover. These youngsters, I want to be a dentist, driver, Range Rover, Bugatti, Lamborghini. You're mixing two different things. Get your priorities sorted out. First, career. And you are talking of being a doctor, service to mankind. Stop commercializing it, my dear friend. 
Others, if you plan to commercialize it, then be a businessman, hardcore. And remember, running a business is different from having a profession. But given the fact that anyone who goes in the medical industry and runs a business, uh, you'll always have a job. So I don't see how that affects. Uh, I don't know why is he puzzled or afraid. Uh, I got this uh, video that was shared to me, uh, maids abused in Dubai. I think you should see that video for those of you who keep saying, why are you bashing up Dubai? Why are you talking bad about Dubai? Next one is a pretty retarded uh, uh, article. This one is a Dubai resident files complaint over the inability to reach the next level on a video game. So Dubai is more worried about video game complaints than about serious stuff. So I found this new news retarded. Either the people in the economic department are jobless and they are not using their common sense or they think this is something so worthwhile to talk about or and not all. This guy, this Dubai resident is fucking jobless and he's taking the piss out of everyone. So this is pretty retarded. Uh, this news I found, found pretty stupid. Water cannon goes wrong. So in the water cannon that goes wrong, it seems that uh, in Dubai airport, you had this nice little plane that came there and uh, they uh, were shooting water just to give it a grand welcome. Well, the passengers were not informed about it. So one of them maybe opened the hatchet, whatever, and uh, people got injured. So that was really sad. Okay. Uh, these are a couple of uh, nice little comments that I received. One is, uh, yeah, just to show you how people respond to me. This gentleman, David Byrne, David Byrne, he says, your child is ugly as you. Oh, fucking hell. Shit, I thought uh, my child was uglier. Okay, anyway. Child is as ugly as you, you horrible Indian cunt. Eee. What is the fascination with my cunt, my dear friend? I bet you shit cunt parents are <laughs> proud of you. Um, I don't know if my parents are shit cunt, but they're not proud of me. I can tell you that much. Neither am I proud of them. So anyway, child is ugly, I'll agree. Uh, I'm also ugly, that I'll agree. I'm a horrible Indian cunt. Okay. I'm horrible, that I agree. Cunt part, I don't know. Uh, shit cunt parents. Well, parents, shit cunt, whatever. You can contact them anytime. So thanks, David Byrne, for your wonderful thoughts and comments. Next one is Ramos, SFTG. Why are you so spiteful? When the economy was good, you stayed for 20 years and took advantage of their booming economy. Oh, fuck. How do you know that I took advantage? I never took advantage of the booming economy because if I did take advantage, I would be having millions, which I didn't have. Okay. You're, so you're only friends with someone when their luck is up. Uh, but once they're down, you spit on them. Uh, there's an element of truth here. We all use people. Like, for example, I keep customers when they can pay me. I don't keep customers when they can't pay me. In the same way, if, let's say, someone helped me at my time of need, I'll help him in his time of need. But that doesn't mean if he helped me once, I'm going to help him forever. In the same way, Dubai didn't give me free lunch, free dinner, free visa, free jobs. It didn't give me anything for free. I had to work my ass off for it. So... Given that I used my common sense, my street smart to get things done, I don't owe anything to anyone. So I'm not spiteful, I'm rather practical. Uh, next one is bro, like to know your views on Abu Dhabi given the highest honor to Modi. I call it fucking politics, my dear friend. They gave the highest fucking order. You can give any fucking order to any fucking honor to anyone. It doesn't mean any fucking thing. Remember, this is all a game of politics. Next one. Juma Hashim, look at this idiot. Ayya, yo, Juma Hashim, sir. Okay, look at this idiot, me. Okay, me. The rich and famous buy paintings and other collector's items. Okay, uh, I think uh, his comment was, um, I was talking about Arab locals who are buying this number plate. So buy, buy number one, it's fucking retarded according to me. So he says, um, in response to that, the rich and famous buy paintings and other collections. So, artistry, creativity. So he's comparing that number plate to artistic creativity. Okay. And they spend a fortune. He has issues with the rich Emiratis buying number plates. Just jealous that he has to beg day and night. 
Juma Hashim sir, Sheik, Sheik, baby Sheik, Sheik, Juma Hashim sir, buy. Please spend your money and buy. It's your money. I'll be so happy. You buy number one, number two, number three, number four, and shout, I'm local, I am local. I'll be so proud of you. Me, sir, I'm Indian. I don't buy painting. I don't buy collector edition. I just buy porota, kimach to eat, small house. I'm very happy with that, sir. Don't want number plate that I'll put in my gond and show everyone. Okay, sir. Uh, Mr. Juma Hashim. Okay, sir. Next one. Oh, again, Juma Hashim. Juma Hashim. Sheikh, Sheikh Juma Hashim. Really, you should be put in jail in Dubai. Thank you, sir. But a Malbari kiss ass that you are, uh, you are, you wiggle out of the situation now, miles away, you have been brave. I don't know if that's a compliment or that's an insult or you're trying to insulate me. But Juma Hashim, sir, I know why I should be put in jail. Because I tell the truth about Dubai, which your asshole cannot take because I put the chili in your Arabic hairy bump. Obviously, there is hair in your bum. Don't do it. Okay. And like you said, Malbari Kisas. Uh, we are very proud. I am fucking proud about being Malbari because we are, because of our lungi that we lift up. That is why you from Camel move to Cadillac. You know, without Malayari, you cannot survive. Remember, Karchai, Parota, everything is from Malayari. And you shouting, I am local, local. Okay. So, Juma Hashim sir, don't be jealous of my lungi. Don't be jealous of my filter coffee moustache. And don't be jealous of our hairy body. Your are local. Buy your number plate, put it up your gond and show off to the world. Okay. Thank you very much. Next one is Mr. Modern Fork. <laughs> you couldn't get any better name than this. Modern Fork. When will you be doing an episode on India's corruption? Baba, all you got to do is just Google. Google or search on YouTube, you'll find, just search Roy Macedo India Corruption or India Criticism, you'll find enough and more videos about me talking about India. Next one, again, Arab local, local. Okay, uh, Mr. Dard, Dard War. Sheikh Dard War, cute guy, looks cute. Okay, so what he says is, hey, you astroloid. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck is an astroloid. Okay. Hey, you astroloid, ugly, stinking Indian low race. Mr. Arab local, who asked you to put your nose in my bum and smell? And then you realize that it was stinking. Why? Take your Arab, Arab local nose. Stop putting it in our bum. That's number one. Okay. What he says is stop lying. When Emiratis rape Yemenis, let alone Yemeni children, when? Symbols are symbol. You just Google, you just Google. Okay, local, maybe local don't know what is Google. It is G O O G. Okay, you go internet, not Arabic, English, English. You click, 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 or ask somebody, ask uh, 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 Rafiq, uh, can you Google? Okay, you ask them to Google and just type uh, UAE human rights abuse. I'll put the spelling down. Human, not humus, human right, not RIT, not left and right, rights. Abuse. Okay, not booze, abuse, A B U S E. Human rights abuse, you'll get something there. And then on YouTube, just type Yemen uh, atrocities UAE. You will find how UAE, not the entire UAE, but the UAE soldiers, how they used sex, sexual molestation of prisoners of war, of children, of women. So, the, you know, for that, you need to be educated, which I guess you're not. But it happens, happens. I understand being local has its has its drawbacks. So it's okay, Mr. Dard Ward. Okay, then. Yemenis are our blood brothers. No wonder you're ruining their blood. That I agree. Your blood. You remove blood for everything. Okay. Mind your tongue. 
Why your father will come and mind my tongue? Why don't you mind your brain? Okay. When you're talking about them, okay, you also put okay. 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 No. And now, please. What a nice guy. He said, please. Okay, please. My low is, my low is, okay, leave our country and go back to your own. We don't want to hear, yalla, yalla, barah, go. Then, why your shake, why your shakes are saying, Indian, please come, invest, invest in our country. Our balls are empty. Nobody is there. We are dying. 20 billion loan. Why? Uh, we are going back to camel. Uh, nobody giving job. Why? Why? Why they give free? Why? Please explain, Mr. Dark the Ward. Why your local shokal is going holding road shows in India? Expo 2020. Please come. Please invest. Why Mamuti Monlal purchased Burchal Arab? You know, why Indians are so rich and making money? Why? Because local shokal cannot survive with it. Your UAE population is like ant. If expat go, UAE is, that's the condition. Maybe you are not educated. I suggest you maybe sit with some local who has little bit more maturity than you. So you will understand. I understand being local, shokal, riding camel. Uh, you have limitations, but it's okay. I totally understand. Okay. So I think I answered more or less everybody's emails and messages. So guys, like I always say, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, please give it a thumbs down. Put your comments because I always respond to your comments. And like I said, this was another session. Thank you very much for joining me. This is me signing off for now. Take care. Bye. Yeah, yeah. I know what you're thinking. You can get a job in the Middle East simply by trying or by magic through others or by a fluke. Remember that competition is everywhere. Some here, some there. But bam, Loy Macedo is the best. Mm -hmm.